It's like kindergarten, all over again. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Hope you're doing well. It was uh, longer than I wanted to uh, in between these vlog episodes. A little bit more time passed than I had hoped. And, you know, I was good for several days after I did the video on self-healing. I actually really uh, kind of surprised myself how well that went. But, not long after I did the last video in between, which was prophetic journaling, had some time in between that about this last week or so, I started to lose my voice and was coughing like crazy. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, what a mess that was. You see, I thought I had won the fight. And I guess I let my guard down. And, uh, didn't go so well. I guess it's what you would call bronchitis. I didn't know because I didn't go to the doctor. I still, you know, in spite of that, I still don't go to a doctor. But my whole house was sick for the week, and, um, uh, I've been struggling to find an answer. It's been a miserable week, to be very honest with you. And I think I reached a point where I thought I had won. And then I stopped fighting the right way. So the first thing I'm going to tell you here is fight until the fight is finished. That's very huge. I've been uh, dreading recording this vlog, to be honest with you, almost in a way, not completely, as it's a little bit of a hit in the pride. And we know pride's not a good thing. Um, and it's the pride of not failing, or even sometimes maybe what people think. Because you say, oh, well, you put out this vlog about self-healing, and look, you still got sick anyway. Well, it was an incomplete battle, because I won the first round, but then... Yeah, I sort of got uh, hit against it. I did the vlog on self-healing. And then, without realizing, it allowed myself to get hit a second time. And now, it's good because this is another confirmation, and I'm going to get into this more about um, failing to succeed. And I don't mean you're failing at succeeding. I mean you're failing for the purpose of succeeding. Okay? It's a little bit of wordplay. I'm going to do a future vlog, or possibly even a book on this, which I've, I've entitled The Enemy's Playbook. Because I'm a kind of guy where I observe things, and I have this ability to kind of see a big picture and look at, it's almost like a chessboard. I can almost look at the chessboard and see where pieces are going. And I'm starting to see something called the enemy's playbook. And now this may be something that's kind of maybe obvious in some ways, but I'm starting to see how the enemy forms his attack. I'm starting to see the blueprint. And it's something I'm going to share with you once I have more clarity on it. And this thing here is something I call the broadside, and I have seen this on more than one occasion, and I will break it down more in a future vlog. I have to get all my thoughts and like notes together about it, but this is called the broadside, and um, interesting how it works. You see, I know that Satan has a hand in a lot of things, but I need to stop using that as my cop-out. I really do. I mean, look, he's a douche, okay? He's defeated. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, why do I keep bringing myself down to his level? Why do I keep allowing myself to go play the game on his home court? Because you know what? I have to stop blaming him and start taking responsibility for all this stuff myself. And what I have done, and this is something I've realized over maybe this last year or so, is that I have allowed what I perceive as detrimental failure to shape the narrative of what I do. And I gotta stop that. Can't have that anymore. There was a, a period for a lot of this where I basically blamed God for things that were not going the right way. And you know what? I gotta stop that. I think I've just had enough. I think I even got to the point where I've said, you know what? Let's just say God is responsible. Let's say he is the one you blame. Okay, just hypothetically speaking. It doesn't change my job assignment and what I'm here to do. So you know what? It makes no difference at this point. Who's the blame? I don't really care. I've, I've basically stopped caring about that. And what I want to share with you is the idea of emotionally separating yourself from things. And it's the difference between putting yourself in a state of compassion versus putting yourself in a state of sympathy. Because if you notice, it was always about Jesus operated in compassion. And what compassion is, is where you look at a situation and you know that the situation is not right. The situation, it's not supposed to be this way. And that's where you operate out of. Whereas if you get into sympathy where, you know, if someone is sick and you're ministering for them, they'll tell you their whole story. And you really got to kind of cut that out. You can't sit there and listen to every little detail and, you know, hear their struggle. You kind of have to cut that off at some point because you'll get into a state of sympathy. And it's where you're kind of feeling the pain alongside them. And that's not a position of power. 
You, you never really see Jesus operating out of sympathy when he did healing. It was always out of compassion. And compassion is emotionally separating yourself to a degree from some of that stuff. It doesn't mean to be cold. Okay? It means to take that power that's in you and get it under control. And when you have power under control, there's another quality of Jesus is meekness. Okay? It doesn't mean you kind of shudder away quietly in a corner. It means you got a lot of power and you keep it under control so that it doesn't get the best of you. Okay? Big difference. But out of failure, quote unquote failure, out of failure comes innovation. It always has been. If you look at the history of our world and, in and inventions, things such as that, or science or technology or anything like that, every time that someone has tried to figure something out is always preceded by a series of strings of failure. So maybe failure doesn't have to be this detrimental, heartbreaking thing as this innovation is just hard-coded in our nature as creative beings made in God's image as a creator. The church that I was saved in many years ago, uh, the pastor there, we were doing a Bible study one time on Acts. And it had to do with Pentecost and that whole situation after Jesus went to the cross and all that. And he told them basically to stay in Jerusalem. Okay, now you think of this. Now really kind of, and the way he framed this, it always stuck with me. And it's only now that I'm doing this vlog, even or as I'm putting my notes here together, that there's elements that I can apply. It's really amazing. So um, always get that stuff in your mind because the Holy Spirit will bring it up to you when, when the time is right. Speaking of, you know, Pentecost. And Jesus goes to the cross. He goes to Jerusalem, the whole thing, right? Now what happens is, he tells these guys, stay in Jerusalem till something cool happens. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, but you get my drift. Now you have to remember, these guys here, they're at the site of what they perceive is their greatest failure with Jesus at the cross. Because we have the beauty of the entire book and we see the full story front to back. They didn't have this. I mean, put yourself in their shoes at, at that time, or their sandals, whatever you want to do. And you think about it, they're sitting away, locked in this room, and they're like, now what? Man, what was that all for? Guys, he's dead. What the heck? You know, there, there had to be such crazy stuff going through their head. And then, you know, a couple chapters later in the book, some really cool stuff happens. Read the book of Acts. The sight of their greatest failure, and out of that came their ultimate power. True story. See, I've had people brain dead in the hospital that I've ministered to that have come back. On the other hand, <laughs> I had a time where I sat there dejected after four hours of praying over a dead body only to be heartbroken when I had the coroner roll him away as I watched helplessly as a family was broken. Now what? It's a big thing. And I have allowed that to shape the narrative, and that's got to stop. And that's got to stop for you too. Because we say, well, what if I pray for someone and they don't get healed? We'll keep praying for people. You know, and emotionally separate yourself. Just take that out of the equation. Because, again, the more that you start getting into that. Now, I always tell you, question everything. But there comes a point where you have to be intelligent about it. And there comes a point where you have to start making smarter decisions with this stuff. Because, again, if you allow yourself to get pulled down to the enemy's level, he is going to pound you. Simple as that. There, there's no other to it. He is going to pound you. Because you're playing on his turf. You're playing according to his rules. The game, that particular game, is rigged in his favor. And why are you playing his game? All right? You see, if I suddenly stop ministering for people, which in a way I almost have, you know, no one's going to receive anything. And that's kind of bad. You know, even if you minister and you get 50% of people healed, there's 50% of people who would have gotten nothing otherwise. You've made some difference. Growing up as a rabid hockey fan my whole life, one of the best quotes that came out of hockey from NHL superstar Wayne Gretzky was that you miss 100% of the shots you never take. So, if you allow yourself to get into a place where you just stop doing what it is you're supposed to be doing, guess what? Now failure becomes everything to you. Now it becomes the full narrative. Just because you decided to stop. In my regular job, I was recording a book which was uh, Soccer Skills. This guy wrote a book about different tactics to try, and he was talking about how when you play soccer, you have one dominant foot which you kick and dribble and do all that stuff with. And he was saying that a lot of people don't practice with their other weaker foot because they feel it's pointless. 
and he encourages you to work on that and work on developing it. He says, because even if you get to the point where you make a fraction of a difference on your weak side, you have a chance of incorporating that and scoring more goals. Everything that you can add into the pot makes you bigger and stronger and better at it. And that's kind of almost similar to this. So if you pray for a thousand people and one person gets healed, you've made a difference in that one person. Should count for something. And that one person, who knows? You know, I had a woman that reached out to her ministry and she wasn't local, so I had to kind of help her out. And she was calling me on the phone saying that she has a daughter that was not doing well and she was in a long-term care situation. And she said that I have, I keep hearing about healing. I keep hearing about, you know, God doing this and God doing that. And I still haven't seen it. How am I supposed to believe in this? So I set her up with some friends of mine in California who are wonderful people. And I got a report the other day that they uh, have been praying for her daughter, which, you know, they're still waiting to see something change. But on the sidelines of this, this woman prays for anyone and everyone now that she can find. And she reports back healings all the time now. So even in a case like this, you never know where you're going to light a fire. You never know which person, maybe that one out of a thousand, is the one that lights fires. And maybe they're the one that gets 10,000 other people healed by proxy. So don't discount that stuff, right? You really need to emotionally separate yourself from the frustration, the dejection, the pain, etc. All right, I've been through it, and you know what, I'll tell you flat out, there's no good that comes out of it. You could sit there and be pissed off all you want that you didn't get someone healed or didn't get someone to come back that had died. I've, I've been there, guys. You know what? It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. All it does is put you down on the enemy's level because now you're agreeing with things that he's created, like anger and frustration and all that stuff. Now you're in agreement with the guy. Is that what you want? Last night, I w again, I've, I've been trying to do this vlog for a couple days and I haven't been feeling that great. Had to still keep working, and uh, I don't know if you can hear my voice isn't all that great right now, but my friend Amir from Pakistan that we've been, that we work with, and he's, he's been a real great friend, he sent me a message last night, he was checking in on me, he says, Bahi, which is Urdu for my brother, Bahi, how you doing, how you feeling, he was checking in on me, and I said, and I said this to him, I said, Amir, I gotta get better at this self-healing thing, I failed. And I'm sitting there, and you know, he was, he was awesome, he was praying for me, and he gave me some encouragement, and that's where it ended. And uh, at that point, it was almost like a Pentecost moment on a very small scale. I was sitting there, what I feel was one of my greatest failures. And I don't know if it must have been the Holy Spirit just kind of hit me. And I said, you know what? i got to stop this. Got to stop. And all I could hear in my head, now maybe I'll do a vlog on this separately in the future to give you a little more on it, but I kept hearing healing through gratitude. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? And you know what? Like I told you in previous videos, it's not so much about what is said it's about what you just suddenly understand in the spirit realm and what as soon as i heard this I and mean, this is why i say it's like oh, god i love the holy spirit and this is why i love the holy spirit so much because I, I you just know when he gives you something you just know and it was like healing through gratitude and i just suddenly knew what to do and you know what i did after i i finished my conversation with amir and after i basically declared this and i was frustrated and i said you know what i said i just started walking around my house i said thank you god that i'm healed thank you god that this is gone Thank you, God, that I feel better. Thank you, God, that you forgive me for doubting you. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for revelation. Thank you, God, that my household is, is healed and better. And what I started doing was I just started thanking God in a positive way, framing it in a positive sentence for everything that I was expecting to happen. Now, did I feel healed at the moment? No. But I said, you know what? Thank you that I'm healed. Thank you that I'm going to sleep tonight. Thank you that I'm getting rest. Thank you for just whatever I could think of. And I just did that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to bed. And as I said in my uh, self-healing video, I slept for about 12 hours straight. I woke up feeling pretty good. And ever since that gratitude session, I guess you would call it, ever since then, this is all starting to break up. I haven't had any coughing fits today. Um, feeling better. A little bit tired, but, you know, that's to be expected. I'm kind of tired anyway. And um, something changed. Something dramatically changed once I started changing my focus from failure to gratitude and from failure to victory. Something that I've put together that I want to share with you guys as a free gift, if you follow the uh, website or the social media, I started just writing one night. It was about 2, 3 in the morning. I started writing this thing. It's a little report. It's called A Christian's Guide to Divine Healing for Yourself. What I've done is almost like kind of what we're talking about here. 
everything that I've gone through with this bout of self-healing that I've been kind of pursuing in this year, um, I wrote it down and I want to give it to you for free. So if you go to dominionfire.com and you join our email newsletter list, it gets sent to you automatically and uh, as part of that process. So I would encourage you to go check that out at dominionfire.com and get a copy of this. Okay, it's a PDF and you go read it right on your computer. And here's the thing. It gives you some tactics, strategies, some things to think about, some things to try. Now, is it an exhaustive manual? No, but it's what I got and I'm sharing it with you. Do I have all the answers? Nope, but I'm sharing with you the ones that I do. And what my hope is, is that you'll take it, run with it, and you'll get some revelation, and maybe you'll report back to me, and then we could start collaborating on this and start putting all these pieces together. So it's a little something free that I put out there for everybody. You're welcome to have it. A Christian's Guide to Divine Healing for Yourself. Go to dominionfire.com, and you can find it. And um, it almost is a document, like a, a documentary or uh, an account even of what I've been doing this past week and how I've been trying to um, get over this. So it's interesting. Got more to add, but let's start with that and see where it goes. And what finally broke me over with this video today was is that I was uh, kind of researching around and on YouTube I came across a video from Dan Moeller, who's a really a neat guy. Dan Moeller, if He's the one that kind of mentored Todd White, and if you know Todd White, you know, dreadlock dude, looks like Sammy Hagar. I mean, seriously, he could be in Van Halen, like, right now. But um, there was a video that he did, and I forget the exact title, but it had to do with failure, and I just suddenly came across it as I was prepping for this, and as I was listening to it, I was like, man, I think I've heard this before, but it really speaks to me now. You know, now was the right season for me to hear that, and I thought it was wonderful. And if I could track down the video, I'll share it down in the comments, and you can check it out for yourself and get some extra insight on this. So, what are we getting at here? This whole thing. Failure to succeed. I don't mean the process of failing at succeeding. I mean the process of taking failure, turning it around into a case where you succeed. Failure for the purpose of succeeding. I choose victory, guys. And I want you to also. I put this vlog together and I share this with you, as I always tell you, to keep it real and to put out there maybe some things that nobody else wants to say. And maybe it's what you're thinking, but I'm the one willing to say it. Maybe that's possible. So I put that out to you guys because you're going to fail. You know how I know? Because I failed. You don't get 100% results. And you know how I know? Because I don't get 100% results. Neither does anybody I know. None of us get 100% results yet. But I believe it's coming. And this is one of those things where if we don't get caught in the mud of failure and getting down on the enemy's level and thinking about things in a way where he frames the narrative and we don't, and we allow him to kind of set the discussion as opposed to Jesus and his word, then uh, we're going to have some problems. And this is why I'm doing this vlog, because I want you to know that if you failed, it's okay. It's a tool for innovation. It's a tool to bring you to success. It's not that you've done it a thousand times and failed. You've just figured out a thousand ways not to do it. And you figured a thousand other possibilities. And that's what God's about. Through God, everything is possible. Amen? So let's figure this out, guys. So I hope this blesses you, and I hope that I've helped you with this. And again, go to dominionfire.com. Get the free report. It's, uh, it's all free. No catches, no strings, no nothing. Just have it. It's my uh, little gift to you guys. Just wanted to share what revelations I've come up with. And if you get something out of it, by all means, send me a message right back. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.